Fora TV. The world is thinking. Lucy Lawless is one example of an actor with a bifurcated career, a topic I would like to explore for a few minutes. It might sound to you like a trivia game, but I think it works as a kind of natural experiment that gives us information about the bifurcated culture. I first noticed this when I was watching the first Lord of the Rings movie and the character of Elrond made his first appearance. He looked strangely familiar to me. Later I looked him up on IMDB and figured out that he was, of course, the same guy who portrays Agent Smith in the Matrix movies. His name is Hugo Weaving. In the mundane world, he has a perfectly respectable career going. It is difficult to make a living as an actor. One has to be very good and to work very hard and to be somewhat lucky to make a go of it. Hugo Weaving has done this and has appeared in various mundane plays and films. If he'd never done any SF work at all, he'd have a career that other actors would envy. It's likely, however, that none of us would have seen him or heard of him because in the mundane world, he is not a huge star. In the SF world, he is one of the biggest stars of all time. Why the difference? What is it about him that accounts for this imbalance? Once I noticed this phenomenon, other examples came to mind. I've already mentioned Lucy Lawless, and it is by no means a historical curiosity because there are incipient bifurcated stars. The Sarah Connor Chronicles, a new TV series based on the Terminator movies, features two. Lena Hetty, who looked familiar to me because I had previously seen her in 300 as the unfortunately named Gorgo, Queen of Sparta, and Summer Glau, who played one of the characters on the SF series Firefly. Sigourney Weaver has had a bifurcated career. Again, this isn't to say that she didn't do perfectly well for herself in mundane films and theatrical productions. In Alien and Aliens, though, she attained a level of fame that far exceeded her mundane work. And I don't think she would mind my saying so, because she took a role in the film Galaxy Quest that made light of exactly this kind of situation. Is there any common thread linking the actresses I've mentioned? Lucy Lawless, Lena Hetty, and Sigourney Weaver are all athletic, statuesque, good at doing action stuff. The cynical interpretation then is that male SF fans like to ogle Amazons. A more generous take on it is that SF is more forgiving towards strong women. I suspect that both of these are true, but they're not enough to explain the bifurcated career phenomenon. Galaxy Quest, of course, was transparently based on Star Trek, which brings to mind the archetypal bifurcated actor, Leonard Nimoy, who attained such perfection in his portrayal of Spock that it led to two unintended consequences. The one everyone knows about is that he afterwards found it difficult to get non-Vulcan work. <laughs> the less obvious one is that never again in the ongoing history of the franchise were the producers of any of those films or television episodes able to find an actor who could convincingly portray a Vulcan. Just as an exercise, I spent a while trying to think whether there was any actor, living or dead, who could possibly portray a Vulcan as convincingly as Leonard Nimoy. I assumed that this experiment would end in failure, but surprisingly, the answer came to me immediately, Hugo Weaving. <laughs> Hugo Weaving would make a totally convincing Vulcan, and it's not just because we've already seen him with pointy ears. It's something else. I think that it is the ability to portray intelligence. When I first saw Weaving as Elrond, I didn't think I was going to like him because he looked very different from how I had imagined this character when <clears throat> I read The Lord of the Rings. But I ended up liking his performance very much. He was able to convince me that he really was a 3,000-year-old elf lord. Part of this is simply that he's a professional actor who's good at what he does, but it also, I'm convinced, has something to do with the ability to project intelligence. 